Good morning, good morning, everybody, and happy Friday to you. Yes, it's another Friday morning, and this is Better Life with Stella. I tell you what, I'm so glad to know Jesus Christ. All I can tell you is if you don't know him, you might want to make an introduction because these are exciting times to live in. These are exciting times. If you don't know Jesus, I can imagine how frightening the news can be every day. I can imagine how frustrating watching what's going on in Canada with the truckers and Trudeau and all of that madness. I can imagine how how frightening all of this stuff can be if you don't know Jesus. But if you know Jesus and you know the end of the story, hello, Rhonda, good morning, why? If you know the end of the story, if you know what the book says, if, you, if you've been in this book, if you get in here and you get in here and you read this stuff, you discover that we know what the end is. We know what happens in between the chapters. We know what happens between chapter one and chapter two and chapter three. And we can read this book. You get all the answers. You get all the clues. If you're taking a test, you got a cheat sheet. You got the answers right here. And there is no reason to fear, Beverly. There is no reason to be scared. There is no reason to be tripped because you and I have all of the answers, all of them, all of them. So I've been on this, you know, the excitement, the enthusiasm, the rejoicing. We are in the end times. And yes, this is the time that we can praise Yeshua. We can praise Yeshua because he is coming again. So there's no reason to be tripping because you know what the end going to be. Okay. But Ha. For those folk who don't know, I got a little something for y'all today, okay? So over the past several weeks, we have been talking about the events leading up through the end times, going into the millennium, going in, uh, so there's a short window of time between now, which is the end of the church age, and the new millennium when Jesus comes to establish his kingdom on the earth. And that's the exciting part because he is dealing with stuff, okay? So it is exciting to be alive in this time. And so uh, yesterday, actually, the, yeah, the past couple of days, you know, I don't, I don't, I, although I'm online quite a bit, I'm online a lot, okay? I, I make, no, make no apologies for that because this is my assignment. However, I, I don't often get to go to other people's pages and see what other people are talking about. And so, yeah, just a couple of past couple of days, I just said, well, let me just go look and see what I'm just going to go through people in my in my circle, people, my friends and see what they're talking. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm looking at the post and I'm looking at the stuff that they're talking about. And I'm looking at the stuff that they're putting on their pages. And I'm like, nobody's talking about Jesus. Nobody's talking about the, nobody's, people are talking about, oh, you know, God's got a word. He's going to, you know, the Lord's going to bring you out and he's going to do this and he's going to do that. And I'm not, I'm not knocking none of that. Okay. I'm not knocking none of that. But I'm like, do you realize what is happening in the earth? And how exciting this is, and that if you and I, who know what Jesus, who Jesus is, and what He is about, if we are not spreading the gospel, I, I did a short video called it Two Waves." Okay, two waves. If we are not activating the first wave, the first wave, then there are people who will only be, at, who will only get access to what happens during the second wave. Now, what's the first wave? Okay, the first wave on that. Yes, right. Yes, yes. Do it on your Facebook group. Talk about oh, talk about the end times. Talk about the marker Israel. So, what is the first wave? The first wave is created by believers with your excitement and with your enthusiasm and with the hope that comes with the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is when you preach the gospel and activate a move of God and an awakening around you. And that's what I endeavor to do. I, I said, you know what? It doesn't matter what I'm going through. It doesn't matter what's happening in my life. What I have to do, I have to be the fire. I have to, you know, fire falls on sacrifice. So sacrifice whatever you're dealing with, whatever challenges, put that on the altar 
and say, God, you are bigger than all of that. And so I'm going to come to you. I'm going to come boldly before the throne of grace where I can find help. But I'm not going to be thinking about just what's going on with me. I want to go, God, what can I do right now to reach people who are sitting there with a gun in their hand about to blow their brains out? What can I do right now to, to reach that person sitting there with a bottle with a bottle of pills in their hands? They got a whole bottle of these, you know, bottle of morphines, and they're sitting there ready to take them. I want to, it's like, God, what can I do right now where I am to make a difference in those people's lives? And so the Lord's been giving me things. Like he said, he said, just start to decree. Every share is a soul. So I just started saying, Lord, every time I share it, every time I put it out there, I'm just telling everybody, every share is a soul. And I fully expect to get on the other side of glory and to discover how the angels who God said, who are, who are standing there waiting on me to share that post so that they can push that post in front of the guy with the gun in his hand, so that they can push that post about salvation in front of the girl with the bottle of pills in her, in, in, in our hands. This is our opportunity. This is our opportunity to enlarge the kingdom. We are the first wave. So the first wave is when you and I enlarge the kingdom one soul at a time. Just get to just just deal with the, the neighbor across the street. Well, I don't know. Pray for them. And then as you go out your driveway and you're backing up, Get out your car for a second. Walk around your car like you're looking at the tire and you see him in the yard and you say, hey man, how you doing? You know, I apologize. I hadn't had a chance to come out here and meet you. My name is Stella. What's your name? I just, you know, just, just want you to know uh, who your neighbors are. Glad you're in the neighborhood. Nice to meet you. You know, and by the way, I saw your, your I saw your somebody in a, on, a, on a crutches the other day. They said, did she have an injury? Can I pray for her? That's all it takes. God is like, look, you go, you make a step, I'll open the door. That's it. That's it. We are the first wave. Now, why is the first wave so critical? Because if you will just do the first wave and you activate movement around you, going out, spreading the gospel, being excited, get all excited, going to tell everybody Christ Jesus is king. You make that first wave and it'll create and it'll reach the people who are hungry. Don't worry about the folk who ain't hungry. Don't worry about those people who who rejecting you don't worry about them let god deal with them he will deal with them you just get to the ones who are like god i just wish somebody i wish i just lord i just i wish i had a reason to live god i'm so tired of this man beating me every night i'm tired of being beat down god i just need some hope god send me some hope you the hope god want to send we're that hope we are that hope, Cynthia. We are the hope that God is wanting to see. And we are the light. So I'm like, you know what? Turn it on, baby. Turn your light on. Get excited, Kathy. Because this is the end times. And we get to be the light and activate the first wave. Now, what's going to happen? In the first wave, there are many people who are going to come into the kingdom. They're, they're going to they're gonna like, well, you know what? If I don't come into the kingdom for no other reason that I don't want to go through this great tribulation that Stella finna talk here about, I, 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 I just want to miss that. That's fine. That's look, look, God said, he did not say you had to have a perfect motive for coming in the kingdom. He just says, call upon the, all of those people who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead for you. And when you do that, you'll be saved. He, he just wants you. You just make a step towards him. He'll get you the rest of the way because I love it. Jeremiah 24, seven says that I will give them a heart to know me, to know that I am their God and they are my people. You start the movement. God will do the rest. He'll get the rest. He'll get your heart. Okay. Now, the last several weeks we have been talking about the events of the tribulation because a lot of churches don't teach, they don't teach Bible prophecy anymore. So it's a whole lot of people who just don't know straight up what's going to happen. Okay. So I started this series and then last week we talked about the events of the first half of the tribulation. Let me give you a quick review on some of that. Okay. A quick review on some of that. Okay. Okay. 
Revelation 4, 1 says, John, the symbol of the church, was taken up into heaven. John was taken to heaven to get this revelation. Then we hop from Revelation 4 down to Daniel 9, 27, where when we see John taken up into heaven, the events of the tribulation itself begin after the rapture of the church. Okay. Then last week we talked about the markers that that and Israel is our marker. It's not what's happening in Canada. It's not what's happening in the United States. It's not what's happening in the Ukraine. It's none of that. You know what you need to be paying attention? You need to be paying attention to what's happening in Israel. Why? Uh, Psalms 83, I, I call it the 8338 flip. Psalms 83 speaks of, of, of there are actually two wars. I think one of them could be considered as a pre-war in Israel. And the second one can be the, is the Ezekiel 38, the big one. Okay. Now, what's the pre-war? The pre-war in Israel, we're watching the markers leading up to the tribulation. Okay. The pre-war is the Psalms 83 war, which is where the neighbors immediately around Israel are the ones who will launch an attack against Israel. And then the Lord is going to, is going to help Israel overcome those neighbors and literally eradicate all of their immediate enemies. Don't look, I ain't write it. I ain't right. I did not read it. I did not read it. It's in the Bible. You go to Psalms 83 read through psalms 83 you will see a list of 10 nations and then with that list of 10 nations you look at the current area of those nations and you will see who they are they still have the same folk been fighting ever since the jew and israel were there a long time ago they come back it was they land in the first place god told them i'm giving you this land it did not belong to palestine i don't care who tell you that lie no the children of israel were given that land by god himself Self. God told them, you go take it. They took it. They occupied the land. Then they got into sin and wickedness, following the neighbors around them, doing things like child sacrifice and child murder. And God said, you know, you keep it up. I'm going to have to beat down on you. They kept it up. God said, I told you, if you don't stop this foolishness, you're getting out of here. And they didn't stop. And God says, I'm dispersing you to the nations. That's the short St uh, Stella Payton translation version. Okay, that's the new Stella, Stella Payton translation. Okay, so then they were scattered. And now those same nations, those nations that are around Israel now are the remnants of, his, of, 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 Abraham's, of Abraham's other children. That's what they're still fighting. They've been fighting. They have been fighting ever since they were in the womb and since Jacob and Esau were in the womb. So you got Esau's kids fighting. Then you got Jacob's. Then you got Ishmael's kids. All of these. That's who's fighting. That's what the, uh, that is the Psalms 83 war is about. Those are the folk fighting. However, Ezekiel 38 is a totally different war because Ezekiel 38 is a war. Now, Psalms 83 is we hate you, Israel. We want to destroy you and wipe you off the face of the planet. In summary, purpose of that war, it will likely come before. Well, it has to come before Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 38 war is. I see Israel blooming. God said when they get back to that land, they were going to bloom. They were going to take off. They were going to prosper. And already Israel has discovered all reserves on their territory. They have this huge, huge gas reserves off the coast of Israel, which is enough to bring natural gas reserves to all of Europe for the next hundred years, which is now the Soviet Union's greatest competitor, Russia's greatest competitor. So now Russia doesn't want Israel to bring their oil to Europe because that gives them competition. They have controlled all of Europe for decades because of their of their gas reserves. Now, so what is the Ukraine all about? It is a warm-up exercise for Putin to discover how much room, how much latitude and how much push can he how much push can he push until he gets some pushback. And he's not going to get any cuz there are no western leaders. There are there, there is nobody in a White House. There is an empty head in the White House in the United States. Straight up there is somebody else in the White House pulling the strings behind a little empty head. I'm just telling you, that's just how it is. I'm sorry. I know I could say it a little nicer, but the truth is just the truth. Okay. So those two wars 
will likely either be right before the rapture of the church or right after. Now, why is this important right now? Because you and I can use this information to tell people and get them ready for the first wave. Because the first wave is the wave that happens before the rapture. That's the opportunity so people can have, have to, they can miss the tribulation. But the second wave is the wave that happens immediately after the rapture. You can imagine all the children who grew up in church going to church, hearing the Bible, but they just figured they, you know, well, I don't think, you know, I've gone to college and gotten my, I've gotten my doctoral degree, and based on the intellectual acumen that I have attained, I simply no longer believe in this book called the Bible. It just doesn't make sense to my intellectual mind, and you fool, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. You fool about to end up in a situation, you, right, your, your intellectual mind is about to help your body, about to allow you to write a check that your spirit man can't pay. Because once the church is gone, yes, you can still be saved, but you will be stuck here with the worst mad, with the, with, 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 take Hitler and multiply him. Okay, what Hitler, what Hitler did, and it wasn't, it was the Jews, it was, and, 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 and would be totally wrong, it was a race war, it was a war designed to exterminate a people, it was, a, it was a racially motivated, evil, wicked war designed to exterminate people, and in addition, it wasn't just it wasn't just the Jews that were murdered, by the way. They murdered anybody that was handicapped. They murdered people who were, for those people who are, who are, who are in the, the gay and lesbian agenda. Do you know that a part of the extermination was to eliminate, eliminate all of those people? That's right, Myrtle, Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, all of them. Okay, so you can take all of them, wrap them up, put a bow on them, and it will not match what is going to happen in the in the tribulation. So the next event in the first half of the tribulation is going to be the covenant. This is Daniel 9, 27. The Antichrist signs a covenant for seven years with the nation of Israel. Now, why do you think... The Antichrist is going to write that covenant. If Israel has just gone through two wars, well, no, the war number one, Israel, God empowers them by his grace for them to kick butt. And then the second war, God himself, in Ezekiel 38, God himself shows up. In fact, a lot of people, let me just read you. Oh, God, yeah, for those people who don't know, you need to read Ezekiel 38 and see what God says he is going to do. It's not about Israel blowing up their bombs or having their little dome and all of that. Uh-uh. It's not about any of that. In Ezekiel 38, God says, look, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an Old Testament sample of the king, of, of a God kind of beat down. I'm going to have the enemy coming against Israel. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to have all of them turn on themselves. Just like you saw in the Old Testament, just like you saw in the battle of Jehoshaphat, when Jehoshaphat was going against, going against some, some of the same people. Some of the same folk. They turned on themselves. Then God said, oh, and that ain't enough. You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to send an earthquake. I'm going to send an earthquake in the Ezekiel 38 war. I'm sending an earthquake, and then I'm going to do that. Oh, and you know what? That ain't enough. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send some hailstone, some fire from heaven. In other words, when God says in Ezekiel 38, he ain't playing. He ain't playing. And he's like, okay, he, he ain't playing. So in that war, so now you see why the Antichrist would be so willing to go ahead and sign a seven-year treaty with the nation of Israel. Because if you got a, got a nation whose God showed up with earthquakes, hailstones, the enemy turned on themselves and killed them. And they had so many weapons until Israel had enough weaponry that they used it for fuel for seven years. Okay, so that's, just, that's number two. Number three, Revelation. Christ opens the first of seven sealed scrolls and the rider of the white horse, probably the Antichrist, appears. He uses diplomacy and the promise of peace and the one world government. When the church is gone, y'all can go ahead and set up your little one world government. Go on, do it. That's what you want to do in the house. God said, go ahead. I'm going to give you a window. I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm telling you, you got permission. Why? Because he has taken the restrainer out of the way. 
Okay, the, re the restrainer is gone. Number four, Revelation 6, 3, 4, the second seal. So for a while, there's going to be the image of peace. It will be a temporary peace. But then the second seal introduces another world war. It's not going to last long. Okay, number five. Revelation 6, 5 through 6, the third seal begins, and that's the suffering. That's famine and inflation, okay? Famine and inflation. Now, we went over some of this last week. Revelation 6, 7 through 8, this is where it starts to get really juicy, okay? The fourth seal results in as all war. So when, what happens when war comes? When war comes, there, there is famine. There is sickness and there is physical death. So this, now, now looking at the things that are happening, why is this imp is important for you and I to know? Because these are talking points for people who may just, you know, I'm not talking about people who don't want to know. I, I don't waste any time telling people who don't want to know. I focus on, Lord, lead me to those people who are hungry for truth, who want just enough truth. I can give you enough truth so that you can take your Bible and go read Psalms 83 for yourself. You can go read Ezekiel 38 for yourself. And I have enough confidence in my God that if you read your Bible and you take it, he will speak to you himself. God speaks loudly. He speaks loudly and he speaks clearly. He says, call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things to come. So you just call, just call, you just call out my name. You'll be there. So Revelation 6, 7 through 8, the fourth seals. So now we've got the wars break out. Now you've got death breaking out. Now you've got a fourth of the people are going to die through 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 four means. We talked about this last week. And in fact, if you go to my Facebook page, you'll start seeing the series that I'm teaching. It's the, these are end time talking points. These are end time. This is information you can share. It's a, you you click on the you click on the page, and then it, it's a, you click on the picture, and the picture will take you to my website, which has a biblical explanation for what I talk about in that. That slide in that picture we will have a hundred and one of them I am now finishing up seven through fifteen we already have six of them that are already and they're being posted and cycle so there'll be one coming out every day or two okay and then now I'm finishing up seven through fifteen and then we'll get those posted this week and then next week and we're just gonna keep getting them coming out hundred and one Bible prophecy some of the same stuff that I'm talking about these are talking points that you can use to help people understand look you you can uh, look if you're left behind it's your own fault and you want it's your own choice it's your choice okay and so the one that I did last week it was so I think it's cute because I, I love the Wizard of Oz and so that line door that says lions and tigers and bears oh my and so it talks about how in Genesis right after Noah came off the ark God put the fear of man in the hearts of animals so that animals would automatically be afraid in the first half of the tribulation that fear will be lifted and what's going to happen is that one of the ways that many people will die will be that the animals will just going to start turning on them so that that bird that you know those birds that used to come on your front porch and eat the bird feeder well now they might be coming to eat you i don't know i'm just saying how what it looks like i don't i don't know but i can't tell you what the bible say okay revelate uh number seven Revelation 6, 9 through 11. This passage is going to introduce the martyrdom of those who are converted under the preaching. Now, in this window of time, there will be 144,000 Jewish witnesses described in chapter 7. This is a number. So many people are going to be, are going to come to Christ in this era, okay? But they're going to be beheaded. That's, that's the, that is the new and improved, the new, the old, but new and improved means of corporal punishment. Okay, no more electric chair. No, they're just gonna cut your head off. And it's really fascinating. It, you, it makes you wonder if the um, if the Antichrist entity, the person, the who is the embodiment of Satan, Satan, Satan embodies an individual. And it makes you wonder if that person is of Arabic or Islamic origin, because that's their main way of of, of killing people. They just cut your head off. Okay, now so. 
So the preaching of the 144,000 is going to happen. And this is still at the beginning of, this is still in the first half of the tribulation. Okay. Number eight, Revelation 6, 12 through 7, 17. This is the sixth seal. This shows the wrath of God that's poured out. And this is where the mighty earthquakes happen. Now, in North America, here in the United States, there are four major fault lines, okay? There is the New Madrid fault line. Then there is another major fault up in Oregon. There is the volcanic fault line that runs along Yellowstone National Park. And then there is the San Andreas fault. Those are the four major ones, okay? Can you imagine all four of those going off at the same time? I mean, it's just, it's just, I mean, so, so when he talks about in this particular passage, the sixth seal, the wrath of God poured out in the form of a mighty earthquake, the likes of which was, has never been experienced. It is so severe that people, the, the earthquake is so bad that people are like, would you just fall, rock, just fall on me and take me out. And people are going to be praying to die and won't be able to die. That's deep right there. You try to kill yourself and you won't die. That's uh, it's better. Just receive Jesus. Just say, God, look, I want to miss this. I know right now I don't have the heart to love Jesus, but I'm, I'm giving you permission to move in my heart, to manifest Jeremiah 24, 7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. God says, I will give them a heart to know me. God says, I'll put, even, even if you even if your motives are wrong and your heart ain't right, God says, if you'll give me permission, give me verbal permission, I'll move on your heart. Just say it. I dare you to say it. I dare you to say, God, I know I ain't right, but I, I, I give you permission to change my heart and let him take it from there. Number 10, Revelations 8 and 7. This is the first trumpet judgment that results in one third of all trees and green grass being burned up by hail, fire, and blood cast upon the earth. Now, what people are, some of the, the experts, they, they, they're, they're trying to figure out what the, the hell we know, fire we know, but what's the blood? Now, if you've done any research, have you guys noticed over the past 10 years, there have been many rivers around the, around the, around the planet that just turn up red. They just turn up red. And then some say that it's an algae bloom. And then some say that some of them, they don't know what it is. Okay. I don't know. I'm not going to try. You can explain it away if you want to. That's fine. You go right ahead and do that. You have that permission. But the Bible says that this, that, that one third of all trees, green grass being burned up by hail, fire, and blood cast upon the earth. Now, where that comes from, we don't know. Okay, but we can know this. In fact, I encourage you, if you've never studied solar cycles, you might want to study solar cycles because he says that there would be signs in the heavens and the stars, the moon, the sun. And right now, the sun is, is start stepping into a new solar cycle. What is a solar cycle? A solar cycle describes the strength and the number of sunspots that manifest and that explode off of the off of the sun's surface and as they explode off of the sun's surface it has radiomagnetic impact upon the earth's surface so the earth's surface is impacted by the sunspots. Now, if you were on my page, did you guys see that, that video I showed you where the satellite just fell out of the sky and just fell on the side of the road? This was just was real. This just happened a few days ago. Why? Because right now in this solar cycle, that the impact of the solar the solar flares bouncing off the side of the sun were so strong that it was starting to knock it's starting to knock satellites out of the out, out of our atmosphere air out of our atmosphere so we've never heard of that before we've never heard of a solar flare 
Now, why is this important? Because what is the what is the word of God says that all of creation is groaning, all of creation, and so the birth pains and the woes that the Bible talks about in Revelation, they're starting to happen. And so we need to, you need to know that, that there are actual signs and indicators leading up to this. And so why am I telling you this? Share this with some of your unbelief. So you, you tell your unbelieving church and say, well, you know what? I can't, baby, I can't make you believe. But you might want to go look at this. You might want to check it out. Because once I'm gone, I can't help you no more. Once I'm gone, I won't be here to pray for you no more. Once I'm gone, I won't be here to be standing on, getting on my knee going, God, please change my child. God, help my child. Jesus, help my child. I, I'm going to be up. You, it's going to be you and God. God going to be here though. He going to be here. But you don't have to stay. You can go to on the first bus. You can take the first flight. Okay. Okay. Revelations 8, 8 through 9. The second trumpet sees a great mountain of sulfur falling into the sea, destroying a third part of the sea and all living creatures in it and a third of the shipping vessels. Can you imagine like Poseidon Adventure and you could see this huge wave just coming and just taking out a third of the shipping vessels. Just imagine all of those huge container ships that are sailing all over the world, all of those ships out in the out in the water around the United States. And we're talking about, you know, our 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 I forget what they call it right now, it's not coming up. But we got our, our we can't distribute our goods. Well, imagine that. Number 12, Revelations 8, 10 through 11. The third trumpet causes a great star or meteor. Now, this is deep, y'all. This is deep. Uh, the third trumpet causes a great star or a meteor called wormwood. Wormwood means bitter, toxic, poisonous, to fall on the fountains of water and a third of rivers to turn bitter, resulting in the deaths of millions because the water is now undrinkable, Okay. Okay, now, what is Wormwood? Now, this is fascinating because if you go to NASA's website, there is an asteroid en route to Earth right now. Right now. This is, this is not, this is, and I'm talking about the scientific theory, not the biblical theory. There is an asteroid named Apophis. Apophis actually passes through our atmosphere quite often, but on Friday the 13th, on April 13th, 2029, scientists say that Apophis, this asteroid, is going to pass within Earth's atmosphere that it could, pa it could pass close enough to our atmosphere to actually impact some of the satellites that are in our atmosphere. Okay, now, there are scientists, in fact, one of those scientists was Bill Gates' right brain for many years. I don't remember his name, but he challenged NASA. NASA says, oh, it's not going to impact the earth. And he challenged NASA to say, you need to redo your numbers because there is no way, and unquote, there is no way in hell that asteroid can come this close to the earth and not have impact. In addition, Usually when asteroids travel, they travel with other rock debris around them. So even if the asteroid itself didn't impact the Earth, the asteroid debris around it would have an impact. And so you, are, you, have, you can, most people haven't heard anything about this. And this is like eight years from now. Okay. So if in fact the timeline that that asteroid is anticipated to go to to hit or to be in be in our atmosphere even if it misses the earth mm, it's gonna miss the earth says nasa y'all these are the same people in the biden administration who told you y'all 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 know that y'all know they lie right you know they lie yeah mm-hmm yeah. Why? Because they don't want you to truth. They don't want you to know the truth. They want to they want you to walk and to live in deception until it's too late to make a good, informed, quality decision to accept Jesus. So you can be out of here. Okay. Just just saying. So looking at the timeline and what's fascinating about the date, April 13th, 2029, and this is 2022, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're looking at 
seven years ish okay now think about this seven years ish so count back if that in this this particular part of revelations that that um wormwood happens towards the towards the tw like towards the 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 leather part uh uh, 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 somewhere between midway of the second half of the tribulations towards the end, somewhere in that window. Again, I'm not I'm not that great of a Bible scholar, but I got enough scholarship in my Bible to have some sense. Okay, so if we count back three and a half years, that drops the timeline: 29, 28, 27, 26. So that's around somewhere around 2025 and we're at 2022. Just saying. Just say I mean it could be it could be wrong. And I hope in a way that is I am, but in another way I hope that I'm not. Because if in fact Wormwood is Apophis, and you can look up Apophis now. Don't don't take my word. In fact, there is a, a gentleman by the name of Tom Horn. He wrote a book called The Wormwood Prophecy. You can look at it. He also wrote wrote read another book, wrote another book called Zeitgeist 2025. And so he d talks in this book about all of the earth events that are coming into alignment with biblical descriptions that you can take all of these, but you're right, Rhonda, what are the chances? What are the chances that there are? <laughs> so th all of these earthly events, the solar flares on the, uh, on the, and then going into, uh, we are not, so solar cycles alone, it's an 11 year cycle. And about midway through the cycle, we're at the beginning of the solar cycle right now. And about midway through the solar cycle, and I think midway is around 2025 <laughs> hello mid 2025 and so now you look at all of these things and god is like i'm trying to tell i'm trying to help y'all out god said i'm trying to help y'all out if you let me i'll help you hmm. so all of these events are lining up and that and so jesus said he told us he says when you see these things begin to happen don't freak out he says, look up for your redemption draws not. Now, why is looking up so important? Because those people, Jesus made it very clear. The prophets made it very clear that those individuals who are looking for his appearing, who are seeking his appearing, who are looking out going, I know you said you were coming, Jesus, and I don't want to miss it. I got my eyes. You know, I'm looking to the hills from what's coming my help because I want to be on the first flight. Okay. The first flight. Okay, so Revelations, let me go on down because, oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. Okay, so Revelations 8, oh, Revelations 8, 12, the fourth trumpet results in one third less sun, sun, moonlight, and stars. Now, what did I just say about the solar cycles? So what happens when solar cycles are at their peak? If the solar cycles, which are at their peak, let's say between 2024 and 2027, that means the greatest numbers of solar flares will actually be emitting, will be exploding off the sun's surface during that window of time. Now, what are the impacts? Well, we saw just, a, this, this was a big solar flare. It was larger than most solar flares that we're accustomed to over the past two, the past two, within the past two weeks, we had two solar flares that were within 24 hours of each other. One of those solar flares was so strong that it distorted and it shut down our radio signal transmission for briefly. Now that was like just, and, and, and that for many scientists was like, whoa, because we, we're not used to that, okay? Now, if let's say that's a small, and we're not even at the peak of the solar cycle, we're just at the beginning. Solar cycle is 11 years long. So we're at the beginning, okay? So now that we're aware of this, what do you do? Well, this is why it's so important to put your faith in Jesus. Because if the Lord can protect you from hurricanes and tornadoes, and he can keep you in this window of time as we are moving closer towards the return of Jesus and towards the, the tribulation period, okay? 
Revelations 13. This is where it starts to get really interesting. A special angel flies around the earth warning that worse judgments are to come. This is now this is where you are now officially into the second half of the tribulation period. You are in it. You're in it. And this is Revelation 13. It says, and I looked and heard an eagle flying directly overhead, proclaiming with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to those who live on the earth because of the remaining sounds of the trumpets of the three angels who are about to blow them. So there are three trumpet judgments left. Okay. Okay, so Revelations 9, 1 through 12. This is the fifth trumpet introduces. This is now this is where it starts to get really fascinating. Because these huge, hideous, demon-like creatures that resemble scorpions and locusts come out of the bottomless pit. Now, okay, how many of you are familiar with the CERN's collider in Switzerland? The CERN's Collider in Switzerland is a portal. You guys remember the, the television show Stargate? Picture Stargate, which is a portal which allows you to move and back and forth between dimensions. CERN's has been, this portal, they have been working to open this portal. And one, in fact, the CEO over the CERN's site says, well, you know, it could be that we could open the portal. We could send something into another realm or we could open in a portal and something from another realm could come into the earth. Bam. What if CERN's is working to create a portal that's just, if you remember the Stargate, you remember how they would open the gate and sometimes it would be something really neat and then sometimes they would open the gate and some hideous monster would come in and now they got to figure out a way to get the monster out. Well, this is what's fascinating about that. Revelations 9, 1 through 12. The fifth trumpet introduces hideous demon-like creatures such that resemble scorpions and locusts, locusts out of the bottomless pit. Not able to kill men, but they torture them so badly that men will seek death and will not find it. In fact, let's just read through it. Revelations 9, 1 through 12. Then the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. He was given a key to the shaft of the abyss. Now remember, these are CERN right now. The scientists in Switzerland in this huge circular collider that goes around this, this area of, the, of their country. They are working to open this portal. In fact, you can watch, in fact, I post the video on my page so you can see the in 2016, I believe, was when they launched the this that it was the celebration for this portals opening and they had this huge demonic presentation where all of the global leaders went and they were like wow and they it was nothing but a dance worshiping the demonic huge okay so uh 9 through 12 the sun and the air were darkened with smoke from the shaft then out of the smoke came locusts onto the earth they were given power like that of the scorpions of the earth. They were told not to damage the grass of the earth or any green plant or tree, but only those people who did not have, only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. The locusts were not given permission to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And their torture was like that of a scorpion when it stings a person. In those days, people will seek death, but will not be able to find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. Now the locusts looked like horses equipped for battle. On their heads were something like crowns similar to gold, and their faces looked like men's faces. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like iron breastplates, and the sounds of their wings was like the noise of many horse-drawn chariots charging into battle. They had tails and stingers like scorpions, and their ability to injure people for five months is in their tails, okay? Oh, man, does this sound like a sci-fi freaking movie or what? 
Okay. They had kings over them, the angels of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon and in Greek is Apollyon. Now, here's something else fascinating about CERNs. The CERN's site is built on a previous temple by the god Apollo. Apollo, Apollo and Apollyon are the same god, okay? And Apollo is the god of chaos. In addition, I can't remember the name. One of the statues that was given to the CERN site, the statue, is an Indian god. Now, I don't remember her name, but it's an Indian god. And you can see her, and she's doing this dance. It's a, and I believe it's called the Dance of Chaos. And this god is the god of destruction and chaos. Now, how likely would it be that CERNs in Switzerland, these ideological brilliant scientists and geniuses, are working to open to create a stargate where they can now go, they can open the gate and on the and go into other dimensions. Okay. Now we all realize that we are spirit beings and there are other dimensions and that there are demonic dimensions that God has held back. God is like, you know, I'm gonna keep y'all safe because I know the devil is ugly, right? But there are demonic evil dimensions that have been held back and restrained by the power of the Holy Ghost and the existence of the church. Okay. And, and once the kingdom of God and the body of Christ, when Christ comes to snatch his church away, the restrainer that has held back, the, that's kept CERNs from getting that portal open just yet. They hadn't been able to open it just yet. There's a reason for that. Okay, Revelations. Okay, next one. Number 16. I'm trying to go down my little list. And by the way, you guys, I'm pulling this. I do. There are real there are a lot of really good websites. I do my own study and I love studying with my Bible, but there are really good websites that you can pull up and they walk you through the scriptures. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to get understanding now. You can be an average Joe Blow, just read the Bible, have your own Bible near, make your own notes and pray before you study. Get in the presence of God, worship before you study. And God will open your he will he will enlarge and expand Expand your understanding. Okay, Revelations 9, 13, sixth trumpet. Okay, now this is deep. This is another one. This is deep. The sixth trumpet introduces 200 million horsemen, or these are demon spirit-like death angels. 200 million of them. 200 million of them. Revelations 9, 13. So now, again, we're on the second half of the tribulation, and we're looking at some really freaky stuff. The first half was bad enough. Now we're into stuff where God is like, okay, you don't want me? Fine. I'm going to let you have all of that, all that you get access to by partnering with Satan and his demonic. This is what you get access to. Revelations 9.13. I'm going to read that scripture. Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet and I heard a single voice coming from the horns of the golden altar that is before God. Okay. These demon spirit like death angels kill one third of the people. This will occur between the 40th and 42nd month of the first part of the tribulation, which brings to 50% of the population what is destroyed by God before the midpoint of the tribulations. These individuals have taken the mark of the beast and are considered incorrigibles. Since estimates of upwards a quarter of those living at that time still, time still be saved and could still be saved under the preaching of the 144,000 mentioned in Revelations 9. It is possible that 75% of the population, say 75% of the population, 25% by martyrdom, will have been destroyed during the first half of the tribulation period. Now do you understand why even a mid-tribulation view, um, mid-tribulation view, means enormous, enormous suffering. So what he's saying, there are three perspectives on the tribulation, okay? They are on the rapture. There are some who believe in the pre-rapture. There are some who believe in uh, pre-tribulation. There are some who believe in mid-tribulation. And then there are some who believe in post-tribulation, that, that, that Jesus comes back for the church at the end. So pre-rapture is, does Jesus come and take his church away at the beginning? 
mid tribulation is does Jesus come and take his church in the middle and post trib is does Jesus just come at the end? Well, when you look at scriptures, there is stronger strip scriptural validation. In addition, when you consider the nature of God, okay, the nature of God is God is, is God, God in his mercy. He's already said in numerous in, in various locations throughout scripture, it's not his will that he punish the righteous. Those people, he says, I, I, he says, I want you to pray that you that you not even enter into this area, that you're not even here. OK, so I don't want to try to get into the mid pre post. I, all I'm saying is I'm going to go look, I'm, I'm, I'm hooting for the first right, the first fight, the, the pre tribulation. I'm praying for that one. However, if by some instance I'm wrong, I'm trying to live and prepare my heart. So that even if I am here any, any, any point past that, I'm asking God, God, do whatever you have to do in my heart to make sure that I'm ready. Now, do I believe in a mid-tribulation uh, rapture? No, I do not. Do I believe in a post-tribulation rapture? No, I do not. Do I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture? Yes, I do. I put my faith there. Why? Because the scripture says, according to your faith, be it unto you. I'm like, mm, I'm going to put my faith at the front of the line because just in case my faith has something to do with whether I'm here or not, I want to make sure that my faith is working on the first flight. Okay. <sighs> okay. So let's see. Let me see. Where was I? Let me go on. Revelations 11, 3 through 4. This is something else that's really fascinating. The two witnesses. The two witnesses prophesy 1,260 days. This is a ministry with, this is where two witnesses. Now, there's there's different dif different discussions about who the witnesses are. That's Revelations 11, 3 through 14. And I will grant my two witnesses authority to prophesy for 1,260 days dressed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone wants to harm them, check this out. Fire comes out of their mouths and completely consumes their enemies. If anyone wants to harm them, they must, they must be killed this way. In other words, if, when, if somebody tries to take out the two witnesses, they just open their mouth and talk about some serious bad breath. Burn you up to crisp, okay? Fire comes out of their mouth and completely consumes their enemies. These two have the power to close up the sky so that it does not rain during the time that they are prophesying. They have power to turn the waters to blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague where, whenever they want. When they have completed their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. Their corpses will lie in the streets in the great city, and that's the city of Jerusalem. Their corpses will lie in the streets of Jerusalem. Um, they, uh, for three and a half days, for three and a half days, those from, uh, those from every people, tribe, nation, and language will look at their corpses because they will not be permitted to to bury them or place them in a tomb. And those who live on the earth will rejoice over them and celebrate, even sending gifts to each other because these two prophets have tormented those who lived on the earth. But after three and a half days, a breath of life from God enters them and they stood on their feet. So now they are killed by the beast, by this beast, and after they die, now they preach for three and a half years. And then after they kill, after they're killed, they, their bodies lie on the streets for three and a half days. And then all of a sudden, God resurrects them and then God takes them out. Their, their assignment is done. Okay, uh, let's see. Revelations. Oh, I'm almost out of time. Revelations number 18. Revelations 11 verse 15. The seventh trumpet judgment introduces the awesome event described in chapters 12 through 18. The most severe judgments yet reported the vile judgments. 
Okay, I'm gonna stop there because I don't have enough time to go into the vile judgments. Now, why am I why am I sharing this? Why am I even going through this? Number one, I'm sharing this because most pastors won't most most churches aren't talking about it. They're not preaching it. If you go to people's websites, nobody's talking about it. Nobody's saying that, you know, nobody's saying Jesus is coming soon. I actually got my t shirt the other day, the rapture is my rapture is real t shirt, and it says, Don't let the day the person wearing this t-shirt disappears be the day you think you decide to learn about the rapture because at that point it will be too late now when is the rapture we don't know we don't have a date the bible does say no man knows the day nor the hour however jesus also said when you see these things happening, look up or be looking up, be in expectation of my returning because your redemption is getting closer. Now, what are the things that he was saying that we should be, in a, be aware of? When you see solar flares knocking satellites out of the earth, those are signs in the heaven. Okay, when you see signs in the moon, you see four blood moons, and they are in cycles, and these four blood moons go in the cycle of, of the, the Hebrew lunar calendar. When you see wars and rumors of wars, now we've seen a lot of rumors of wars, but now uh, in recent months, now for four years, the, the, the United States government was not involved in or embroiled in in any way, any kind of war. When Trump was in office, we didn't have that because, you know, folk were like, he crazy too. But now that we have a mindless one in, in a, a, a mindless regime in office, there is, America has no brain. We have no leadership. We have no leadership. Now, those people up there, they, they have, they don't know squat from diddly. None of them. Okay. So, Right now, we don't know. We don't know. Which means that the regimes, those rogue regimes that want to start wars, they're like, oh, I can start my war now. Woohoo! Woo I can move my I can move my rockets and missiles over to the border of this country. I can move my rockets and missiles over to the border. You've got so so now you've got you've got Putin going crazy, you've got Iran going crazy, you've got uh, North Korea going crazy, and you got China going crazy. So you've got four huge four nations that are all are that are all now equipped with 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 um with nuclear weaponry you know and we, I, I believe iran already has it they just you know they don't know how to use it so they 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 don't hopefully they won't blow themselves up first or maybe, maybe they should i don't know anyway so we have all of these things and so why the reason we need to know we need to be aware of this is because the line, the timelines are accelerating and it's happening so much faster you need talking points. You need to be able to say, well, you know what? When you turn on the news at five o'clock, you need to be able to say, ah, hmm, Iran, huh, wow. The United States just removed all sanctions from Iran and now there won't be any consequences for any of the stuff that they do in an effort to annihilate Israel and wipe them off the planet. And I don't care what anybody says that, that you ever, anybody with half a brain, well, anybody with a 10th of a brain know that there is nothing right about any country saying to another country, you don't have the right to exist. What if somebody said to all black people, you don't have the right to exist and we're going to clean up, we're going to clear up, we're going to kill all the black people on the planet. Any, pla any country that has black people as a primary population, we're going to wipe you off the planet. Who, that is, I mean, that's, that's, that's there. That is, that is wrong. Even in the wrong is wrong category, but that's what the, in the enemies of Israel are saying. But you know what? That any enemy of Israel is an enemy of God and God, he got it. He's in control. He got the power and he is saying to each of us, be informed, be educated, start looking up, get all excited Tell people about the gospel. You don't have to preach a sermon. You can say, hey, you need to check this out. You know, just share, share a video, share a post. I told one of my, one of my posts, I started doing these little shorts. One of the shorts is, don't let the devil fool you. 
You know, the enemy wants to fool you and convince you that, oh, you know, there are no consequences for how you're living right now. Jesus is not coming back. You don't need to know. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you, yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. You need to know some of the scriptures that point to his return. Because when you look at those scriptures and then you go to, you go to Psalms 83 and you read those nations and then you turn on the news and you see that those are the same countries right now that are working to encir encircle Israel on all sides and that Israel is going to utterly destroy to the degree in the Bible it even says that Damascus will be wiped off the face of the planet now that's so so I'd be like I'm, I'm looking at Damascus going what gonna happen over there yeah why because you need to know and when people can see when they can look at it, What's happening on the news at five o'clock and then they can see it in their Bible. Then they have to make a decision. You can, you reject God or you accept him. You reject him. That's fine. It's your choice. You get to choose. That's the beauty of our God. He says, you get to choose. Or you can say, God, this is not how I want to live. I need to know Jesus and just ask Jesus to save you now. Simple. Pray this prayer. Heavenly father, I know I'm a sinner. The Bible says everybody has sinned. Everybody has sinned and come short of your glory. So I'm asking you right now, forgive me of my sins. And Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died on the cross for me. And you took my sins. You died for me. And so as you died for me, I'm going to confess you with my mouth right now. Jesus, you're real. I believe in my heart that you died for me. And the Bible says, if I do that, I'm going to be saved. And I'm asking you to save me now. And that's what gets you started. That little prayer, simple prayer, gets you started on your walk with God. That's what it takes. Just make it real. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that Christ was raised from the dead for you. And you will be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call his name. Say, Jesus, help me. God, I don't have the faith in myself to believe in you, but I have enough faith to believe that you can help me believe in you. Jeremiah 24, 7. Go read that scripture. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. God says, I will give you a heart to know me. He's going to put it inside of you, the capacity to know him, to seek him, to connect with him. Jeremiah 24, 7 is one of my favorite scriptures. It was one of the scriptures that God really taught me to introduce himself into my life when I felt like I, 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 I couldn't connect. And God says, don't worry about you connecting. He says, you just give me just, just say this with me. And I said that scripture and the Lord began to open up the whole world of the kingdom in my life. And he'll do the same for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word that you have put in my heart today. A word about understanding the events of the tribulation period and the timeline. And the events of, those, of, of that timeline. And the connection between the events of this timeline and what's happening in the earth right now. Lord, we thank you for restraining the efforts of the CERN Collider. Thank you, Lord, for holding back the enemy and giving us an opportunity to reach every person who has an inkling of a heart to say yes to Jesus. Lord, we pray that not one person with an inkling of a heart to say just yes to Jesus will, will miss the opportunity to do so. Lord, we thank you for sending out your angelic host even now to every single person who has even a seed of a heart to say yes to Jesus. Lord, we thank you for reaching that person for sending the perfect laborer, for sending angels if necessary to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We cut off Satan's efforts to take their lives, to shorten their opportunities. In Jesus' name, we decree they will live and not die. They won't commit suicide. They won't be in accidents. They will have the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. And God is preparing the perfect laborer and if necessary, an angel to go into their path and share the good news of the gospel so that they can receive him. And that's it. Ask Jesus to save them now. Now, if you've got loved ones and you don't, you don't, you, you can't preach to them, you just share this video. Just share this video. And if you need to fast forward it to the end, go for it. Fast forward it to the end. Because they need to hear the truth. 
Because when you hear the truth, you have the opportunity to know the truth. And that truth will set you free. Ah, oh, I'm out of time. I'm over time. Gotta go, you guys. Quick announcement. Don't forget, this Sunday night, Teresa Wilson is going to be talking about, I'm, I'm so excited for her to share her testimony, her story about going from nothing to a miracle provision, how God took them from, from just nothing, no resources, and major, major health traumas in their family, a, a, brain, a, a brain tumor, their son had a brain tumor, how God super naturally brought healing and restoration to life. You got to hear it. I, I can't even tell. That's this Sunday night. You can go to my page and uh, or message me. We'll send you the event bright link. This is a free. I just ask people for a donation. I always, whenever I invite somebody to come into my community, I don't like to ask them to come and speak for nothing. Even if you just give a dollar, fine. Give a dollar. That's fine. We don't care how much you give. Just sow a seed. That's all you got to do. Love you guys. Oh, and don't, oh, and then on February 27th, I almost forgot, can't forget my girl, Pam Thompson is launching her ministry, Healing for the Abortion Wounded. Every single one of us knows somebody who is still walking wounded, walking around with abortion trauma. They've never dealt with it. Many people have never told anybody. And that secret is toxic. It will produce sickness and disease in your body. It'll produce tumors as long as it is there. And that nagging notion of what you did, God wants to heal you, to forgive you, and to reconnect you with your baby, with your child. Your baby's not dead. Your baby's not gone. They're not here on the planet, but their spirit is still alive, and they are in heaven waiting for you. God is in heaven waiting to reconnect you with your family. Your children, your child is in heaven waiting for you. And the saddest thing would be is for you never to get there and meet them. So don't miss Pam Thompson's Healing the Abortion Wounded. She can help you get started on the process of stepping into that level of healing and restoration for you, for your child, for your family. I love you guys. Till next time, you make it a terrific day. Bye-bye.